Ahoy mateys! So something I get asked about a lot on stream is how do I become better at PvP or what advice would I give to new players who are just starting out on the seas? Whether we enjoy PvP or not, it is such a big part of the game and even if you want to focus on commendations and voyages, you still want to be able to know how to defend yourself on the sea should the time arise. So here are 5 basic PvP tips for Sea of Thieves. Tip number one is know your weapons. In Sea of Thieves there are four different weapons and a good pirate will use a different weapon combination for different situations and roles. The four different weapons are the sword, the eye of reach, the flintlock and the blunderbuss. The sword is really good for PvE if you're doing voyages and world events or killing skeletons. You can do a 3 hit combo against other players and the biggest advantage of using this weapon is the sword lunge. You do this by blocking and then holding down the attack button and you can actually go a longer distance as well if you jump right when you hear this sound. This is good for in general fast travel between ship and land, for boarding other ships and also during combat as well because this attack cannot be blocked and this is going to deal a nice 60% damage to your enemies. Another perk is that this is the only weapon that can block other incoming sword attacks. You can also hop around whilst holding block to do bunny hopping and if you block before boarding another ship, once you're on board you can hopefully dodge a blunder to the face if enemies are guarding the ladder. There's also the added bonus of no reloading compared to double gunners who may run out of bullets. So if you're carrying a sword, you're never going to be in a situation where you can't deal damage. The sniper is my personal favourite. This is incredibly useful to get those long shots on kegs, players in the water and it can actually be really deadly up close if you learn how to become a skilled double gunner. I personally love the sniper as it deals 70 damage so if I hit an enemy once it's highly likely that they may die if they didn't have full health to begin with or they're gonna have to heal which gives me chance to reload and then fire another shot. I find pistols really useful during water combat. Combined with a sniper it means that you can pick off your enemies whilst keeping a safe distance. It can also be used for close range and long range too, so honestly this weapon is always a handy one to use. Note that different skins will have different iron sights, which may affect your aim. I tend to go for skins such as the Ebon, Mercenary or the Wild Rose, as they are very sleek and they have a nice reference point to help you aim. The blunderbuss is the only weapon that can one-shot kill other enemies. This fires 10 pellets that each do 10 damage, so if you blunder a pirate up close, it's likely that you're going to kill them, or at least significantly damage them. It's also the only weapon with a knockback effect, which makes it super handy when watching for borders, as you're either going to kill the enemy in one shot, or at least send them off the ladder and away from your ship. If you're a solo slooper or your primary role is on helm, I would always recommend carrying this weapon for these reasons. Here is a table showing each weapon and the damage that it deals in the game. Like I mentioned earlier, I find myself switching between all four weapons depending on the situation at hand. It's also a nice idea to work with your shipmates and try and base your weapon choice off them. The last thing you want is your crew getting sniped to death in the water because you all have close range weapons or not being able to prevent borders because you're all carrying pistols and snipers. I would say it's nice to have at least one person with a blunder and one person with a sniper just to cover all situations. However, if you do find yourself in a situation where you've brought the wrong weapons to a fight, you can actually switch your loadout on the Ferry of the Damned. Not only this, but if you run out of bullets, you can reload again at outposts. Just walk up to the weapons box and pick a different skin for the weapon that you're carrying and there you go, you have full ammo again. The last thing I want to talk about on this tip is your sensitivity. And honestly, I think this is more of a subjective matter rather than a one-size-fits-all tip and you've kind of got to figure out what works for you. Personally, I try to have a low DPI on my mouse whilst having the sensitivity in-game turned up 
but if you don't really know much about this, what I would recommend doing is getting an Order of Souls quest with Skellies, practice shooting those while slowly adjusting the settings in game until you find something that feels right for you. But honestly, fine tuning and exploring your sensitivity can really help to improve your PvP and aim. Tip number two is all about food, regen and throwables. If your destination is quite far away and you've got a long distance to sail, you want to be hopping off at islands along your journey to get food, supplies and cooked meat. You're most likely going to find animals on these islands, so it's a really good idea to stock up on meat. Try to always have something cooking just for efficiency, as cooked food is going to give you health regeneration. For those who don't know what this is, if you look at your health bar, you will see a skull with a circle around it. When you eat cooked meat, this fills the bar up and any time that you take damage in game, this will fill back up any health you lost as long as you have enough regen. It's so important to be prepared for a fight, so if you know that you've got a fight upcoming, you want to eat full regen. All cooked food takes two bites and is going to do different amount of health and regeneration depending on the meat. Food organisation is so important during fights as well. You really don't want to be taking bananas, so I tend to put them alongside coconuts and sometimes pomegranates in the bottom barrel and I use that food for PvE. And then I save the best food such as mangoes and pineapples and cooked meat, I save that for PvP. All fruit will heal you by different amounts as well. Pineapples are the best because they take two bites and each bite will replenish your health back to full. I would say it's a good idea to have food on a hotkey as well to save time in emergencies. If you're about to die, you don't want to waste time bringing up the item radial and then choosing food. You want to just be able to click a button and then bring up your food. You can easily do this in your settings. I have mine bound to thumb mouse button 2. And also, if you have it on a hotkey, if you keep pressing the button that you've assigned to food, you can actually cycle through all the different fruit that you are carrying at the time. So if you're on 50% health and you don't want to waste a pineapple, you can easily just switch to a different fruit. Speaking of things to hotkey, throwables are very useful during PvP. I have mine bound to the number one. Firebombs are good for distractions. They don't really deal much damage against other pirates, but they cause chaos and in general are just a bit of a pain to deal with. Blunderbombs are my favorite, however. You can use these to finish off an enemy. A direct hit is going to give you 50 damage, so if I've missed my second shot or I've run out of bullets, I sometimes use a blunderbomb to finish them off. You can also use your throwables to board other ships if people are guarding ladders. Similar to the blunderbuss, it has that knockback effect, allowing you to remove your enemy and get on board. Tip number three is always move around. You never ever want to be standing still or running and swimming in a straight line, as this just makes you an easy target to hit. Try to learn the layout of each ship as well so that you can use this to your advantage. So if you're in a galleon and you're up by the helm, you can jump off and land in the captain's quarters, confusing your enemy and keeping them distracted. If you've taken a bit of damage on the enemy ship and you feel like you're going to die, try and jump off the side whilst eating food so that when you land in the water you have more health. And also, a lot of the time, other players will jump in the water after you, so if you can try to anticipate this, it makes it easier to get the upper hand. Something I do as a general rule is I try not to go below deck. On galleons, it's just so easy to get cornered and sorted to death since you're likely going to be outnumbered. And especially on brigs and sloops, there's just not a lot of space to run around below deck, and this usually ends badly. Whereas if you stay top deck, you can always jump off if you need, and there's a lot more room to manoeuvre. Tip number four is take those opportunities to practice. Try shooting at skellies if you're going past an island. Or if you're sailing past some barrels in the water with a boom barrel, try and shoot it. If you feel like this is getting too easy, then maybe leave some distance before taking a shot to really test your aim. If there's nothing around you in the game, you can always shoot the bell, as this will provide an audio cue as to when you're hitting your shots. 
This tip may sound daft, but honestly, staying on top of this and doing activities like this will help you to keep in practice and keep in shape with your aim. My fifth and final tip is about experience and having the right mindset. It is so hard to get sunk sometimes, but one thing me and my shipmate try to stand by is that loot isn't yours until you sell it. It's perfectly okay to lose. No matter how good you are, you will sink and that is okay. <laughs> Instead of letting it get to your head, try to understand why it happened and be reflective. Me and my partner try to be critical of each other and understand why we sunk. By that, I don't mean that we message each other like this, <laughs> but we try to be objective and give constructive criticism towards each other. In fact, a lot of the time we will actually watch our streams back to analyze where we went wrong. So if it's possible, maybe you can record some PVP encounters so that you and your crew can watch it back later. It can be hard when you've spent hours getting a loot haul or you've got a bunch of supplies on board, but sometimes sinking is more valuable than the loot you have on board because you're going to get that experience and knowledge and you're going to be a better pirate for next time. So say GG's, you never know, the other team may even turn out to be quite wholesome and share with you their tips on how they managed to sink you. Speaking of gaining experience as well, Arena is good for practicing as you have nothing to lose in this mode and if you sink you're just going to respawn with all of your supplies again but bear in mind the developers did say that they're not really going to focus on content for Arena in future, they're going to focus more on adventure mode. Adventure is going to be more valuable in my opinion as this is where your skills will really be tested because that's when you do have things to lose. Arena is sort of like being in a flight simulator and adventure mode is like flying the actual plane. So what I'm trying to say here is don't fear the fight, embrace it and be okay with sinking and learning how to be better. Ah, Overall, these things take time to get good at and time to master. Even after two years of playing Sea of Thieves, I still sink and I still mess up all the time. But the more you face that fear and get involved in PvP, the better you will become. If you found this useful or you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any PvP tips yourself that you want to share in the comments, please do, as I really do love having these discussions. And as always, may the wind be in your sails.